Hi, welcome to St. Mark United Methodist Church. This is our Takeover Youth Sunday. At all of our five services, the youth will be leading in worship, leading singing and praying and bringing the message. It's going to be a wonderful Sunday. And by the way, this is how I got started in the ministry. It was a church that gave me opportunity and then encouraged the gifts that God had given me. So pray for our youth this week. Thanks for joining with us. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This is Youth Takeover Sunday. Woo! You don't know how excited I am about that because we've got youth doing almost everything but involved in absolutely everything. And so the emotion and the passion is just uh, high energy in all all five of our services. So let's give a big hand to Julie, who got all of this organized. It's hard to get one person who's a young person to preach. She got five to do it. So way to go, Julie. So I welcome you. i let you know that, next, uh, that tomorrow is our charge conference uh, for anybody who wants to be involved in that. And uh, we're looking forward to praising God today. So thanks for joining us. Oh 
Welcome to Youth Sunday, and welcome to St. Mark and our Unplugged service. We have a few announcements this Sunday. Next Sunday is Graduation Sunday, so we hope to see you all here to celebrate our graduates. We also have an ice cream social next Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 to celebrate Pastor Dan and Pastor John's, or, yeah, Pastor John's time here at St. Mark. Then May 28th, all men are invited to our men's community prayer breakfast here at River Street at 6.30 a.m. on May 28th. We want to spend time this morning in prayer. You may have prayer requests or prayer reports that you would like to share with us. Pastor Dan and I will both have a microphone, and if you will just raise your hand, we will come to you. Melody Jones. Angela Powers. Chris Roberts. Vicki Knott and Doris Howard. Uh, April Walden, who's a singer up here, her father passed away this week, so want to think of her family. Okay, now let us go into prayer. Lord, we lift up the names that were said out loud this morning, and we also lift up those names that are on our hearts, but were not spoken out loud. Lord, we know you are with each of these people, and we know you are with us all. Help us be ever mindful of your presence, Lord, and let us be comforted knowing you are there. We ask your blessings on everyone here today, Lord. We do pray, Father, for your blessing. Pour out your spirit upon us today. And upon these young people, O oh Lord, we ask, fill them with the love of Jesus as they share it with others. And Father, we pray that you'd bless these prayer requests in a special way. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Be with those who are facing health challenges. Be with each and every family, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. the same old lies if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker if you need freedom saving he's a prison shaker Shaking, 
invited to bring your offering to the altar. Uh, just, a, just a quick note, what a blessing it has been on a Wednesday rehearsal to have these young people here. And I can't believe it when people say, oh, you know, the, the, the kids are the future and the future is not going to be great. It's like, man, I don't see that in these kids. I see my heart is, has hope because they are way better at this age than I was at this age. And um, so it's, um, it was really fun Wednesday night and I hope to see them again. This song's called, Oh Come to the Altar.
Lord, bless these gifts that have been given to you and help us to use them according to your will to further your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, if any kids want to come up for the children's moment. Okay, so are y'all ever scared of the dark? Okay, so you know how like when you turn the light on, you can see everything again and you're not scared anymore? Okay, well, Jesus wants us to be the light in the world. So he wants us to spread our light to those who live in darkness because some people don't know Jesus and he wants you to spread the word of him to everyone around. Okay. He once told a parable in Matthew that said, basically, you don't put a lamp on a table and cover it up with a bowl. Instead, you put it on a stand for the whole house to be able to see. He wants you to be the lamp and spread your light to the world. Oh, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you for letting everyone get here safely to come worship with us. Let everyone have a great week, and let everyone know to be the light of the world, and and spread the message of Jesus to all its citizens. Amen. Aren't they doing a wonderful job? So we chose this day to be Youth Sunday because it's another very special day. Today is Confirmation Sunday. Um, we've had, this has been an unusual uh, year because we've had two confirmation classes this year since we all know how well 2020 went. Um, so we were excited to get these nine children here. Um, we confirm at St. Mark in the eighth grade. So for the past almost eight weeks, every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we've had our eighth graders come for their confirmation class. And today is the day that we invite them in. Pastor Dan? How exciting this is to see uh, each one of these come forward at this time. So um, we're going to bring them forward as a group. Um, and we've got Matthew Cooper Dalton. And if Matthew, if you come and just stand right over here. Uh, Grace Elizabeth Lawless, Noah Franklin Perrin, Liam Anthony Tompkins, Charlie Ann Leyland, it's a special time for you all. You've put in an incredible amount of work. And so I say, well done. Eight weeks of study? Way to go. And I also say, move everything that you've learned from your head 
into your heart. And that's how you will be persons sharing God's light with others. So this is not an ending. This is a beginning. You now are going to be members of St. Mark United Methodist Church. And the gifts that God has given you, which we are seeing evident right in front of us, are the gifts that you will bless others with through the ministry of St. Mark. And just like uh, Greg said, we look forward to the future with each and every one of you. So um, Julie's going to hand you, you your Bibles, and then I'm going to ask your confirmation questions and, as well as to the church. You're holding something very special. No, not your certificate. It's the word of God. God has spoken to us through Jesus Christ, the word of God, and has given to us a written word. Individuals who are able to testify, an inspired word to tell us and to show us the way forward. So devour it, eat it. Make it part of your life, and you will bless others. It'll just bubble out of you. All right, so here are the questions. The first one is talking about repentance. And my question to you, because repentance is you turn. That's what it means. So will you acknowledge before these people that you will turn from the forces of darkness toward the light, Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And the second question has to do with remembering your baptism. Because baptism is when God announces, you're mine, I love you. And so my question for you today is, do you acknowledge before these witnesses that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And those are two confessions of faith that make um, our faith visible to others. And so I turn to you as a congregation in support of these young people. Our newest members, do you support them and will you support their gifts and encourage them to use them to further the kingdom of God among us. Amen. Well, let's pray together. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon these young people. Make them future leaders within this world, leaders of light who share with others in the way that you've given them, the, the gifts that you've given them. May they, O oh Lord, share in ministry through their, their gifts, their witness, their prayers, and their presence as they serve you in genuine ways. I thank you for a church that embraces them and for leaders like Julie. And we, we pray your blessing upon them as a group and that uh, the, the Greenwood area would be blessed because of them. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's have a round of applause. And now the main event. Good morning. Okay, so is it on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, Carly Punt. I am the youth group president um, for this 
year or this term or whatever. Um, I have been a member of, or I've been coming to this church since I was like five or six, um, or maybe a little bit younger, and that's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm definitely not used to being up here. Um, I'm actually really nervous, but, oh well, I'm way more comfortable in the back, in the booth, with (laughs) Lexi and Adam, since they wanted a shout out. (laughs) Um, but obviously this is Youth Sunday, so, um, four other seniors, or I guess three other seniors and an eighth or ninth grader, um, as well as myself is going to be bringing the message today. So with that being said, let's start off with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today to worship and to learn about you. We ask that you open our hearts to you, Lord, and open our ears so that we can listen to your word. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Um, When Julie asked me to do this, the first thing that I thought about, she said, be the light, was the um, topic. The first thing that I thought about was how cool I thought it was when I was an acolyte um, in elementary school and how important it was to bring in the light of Jesus to the service and bring it out. Um, And I think about that a lot when I carry Jesus through my everyday life, and so I try to just kind of remember that, I I don't know what it's called, acolyte stick? (laughs) I don't know what it's called, the little thing with the, y'all know. Um, Anyway, um, I, ca- I try to carry, I try to use that as an incentive to just keep me, um, rem- keep reminding me to that how important it is to bring the light of the Lord um, with me everywhere I go. Um, and honestly, being a senior during the middle of a pandemic has been extremely difficult to try and shine the light of Jesus. Um, throughout all the negativity and all of the, um, just like things with politics and the like mask, no mask, everything like that. Um, it, for me, I know it's been really difficult to try and, um, just speak out and proclaim my faith, but people like Robbie and Jennifer and Julie and Miss Paige and, um, they have all just helped me keep a positive mind and a positive attitude about um, just living for Jesus and focusing on the as the light as much as I can. Um, so with that being said, our first scripture lesson of the day is um, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And it, um, well, I guess I can read it up there. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is the light. In him there is no darkness at all. Um, So to me this means that, well, the way I interpret it is, it means that God is the goodness and the truth. So he contains no evil, no lies, no darkness. And then John continues to say that God is the light and that he holds no shadows or darkness. This means that, um, like, he is just perfect with no no sin at all. So he's the, Jesus is the light of the world. Excuse me. It's that time of the year with the allergies. Um, he is the light of the world. He is the power. He is the definition of holiness and righteousness, and no darkness, no evil can overcome him. And that, I was thinking about this, and I was reading over this last night, and I was completely mind-blown because I never really get the chance to think this deep about um, Scripture sometimes, but that really got to me how amazing that no darkness can get to him. It's just it's insane. Um, well, anyway, um, So, also, when I think of the light of Jesus, I think of, um, a lot of y'all know that I've had 15, 16-ish surgeries, so 
um, I feel like that I've had a lot of negativity kind of be put upon me, but I've tried to, instead of, I've tried to turn that negativity into positivity and shown that no matter what you're going through or how hard that you think your life is, you can always find, you can always find, um, I don't know what the word is, a way to make sure that you can turn that into a lesson for yourself and a lesson for others where you just shine the light of Jesus. So for me, I know um, I had my hardest surgery in the ninth grade, and I tried so hard just to be so positive and so, like, bring the light. I mean, it was hard, but Julie and Robbie and Jennifer, once again, they all, I mean, they came to my house, they... Robbie carried me up the stairs to Sunday school. I mean, that right there, those little things showed me how important it is to just be positive and um, stay focused on the light of Jesus. So, the second scripture lesson of the day, Adam, you're on a roll. <laughs> when Jesus spoke... When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John eight twelve. So, um, Jesus is, and I interpreted this as, I did a little um, digging, and Jesus is basically telling us that we need to continue to look for him uh, to seek for him for the answers that we need. And this verse um, holds seven of the I am statements in the gospel of John. So he, and they are some of the most powerful um, statements in the book of John. And he, Jesus is kind of referring to himself as the I am um, when he's going back to when he said, when God said to Moses, tell people I, that I am was sent. I am has sent you in Exodus. So I feel like this verse is extremely important um, to refer back to in times like these or in difficult times when you're just down or, I mean, really, anytime, honestly. Because um, we have to make sure that we turn back and focus on the light of Jesus instead of all the darkness and the negativity. And if we walk with him in the light, then we'll never walk in the darkness. Um, so um, that's pretty much all I have. <laughs> anyway, so. I am going to close us in prayer, and yeah. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for shielding us from the, from your dark, from my goodness. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for shielding us from the darkness with your son's everlasting light. May the light of Christ and his love be seen in all of us. May we all reflect the light of the Lord in our everyday lives, especially in the dark times that we are in today. Amen. Who does this go to? Oh, okay. Oh. I'm okay. Carly, thank you. You don't realize what a role model you are in, because we've all shared in what you went through. And I can only say how encouraged you've made me just by your presence sometimes. And uh, this next song we're going to do, if I turn my tuner off, it's called Good, Good Father. stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whisper of love in the 
dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we can say a word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. So unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Hey, thanks, band. Way to go. Thanks, everybody who has been involved in this service. Let's stand together and give them one more round of applause. <laughs> Remember, you are not alone. And in ministry, you are not alone. And in sharing the light, you are not alone. God has many, many people, and you are part of that. And that's what's so wonderful to see in our services. So many people sharing the love of Jesus. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And remember, you're not alone. Hey, thanks for coming. We'll see you next Sunday. Hey, wasn't that a great service? I love seeing the passion of our youth expressed through different kinds of ministry and leading us in worship together. Hey, thanks for joining with us. Remember, you're always welcome at St. Mark United Methodist Church. Have a great day.